Mr. Ed here. It is a hot, humid August morning here in Southeast Louisiana. And I'm headed over to the honey house to do some chores. Wait, wait, we gotta wait for Joe Gerald to drive on by in the tractor. Wave, Joe Gerald, wave! <laughs> Joe and I have been working together here at the Abbey for over 12 years. He's been here for like about 50 years. And like I was saying, we got a lot of jobs to finish up today. And it's kind of like this video is going to be the, the third in the series of what I call the honey, pro, honey processing trifecta of videos. That's right. We're actually going to be rendering beeswax today. Now, oh man, look at this. As I, I love this part. Let, you could, this is great. Let me show you. I have to pass this little palm tree every every time to come to the house, honey house. Now this little palm tree, date tree, uh, they call it a jelly palm or a, I think Perdido palm. I don't know. I don't really know the name of it, but I'm sure that plenty of you all know what the name of it is. And look at this. Oh, in August, the little I don't know, the, the fruit of it are, are ripe. And these things are awesome tasting. They are really, really good. They are really good. Look how pretty they are. Look at that. And the smell, oh, they're very, very sweet smelling out here. But the taste of them, it's very sour. Oh, look, that one just fell. We're going to get that. <laughs> now, that was a good little pit stop right there. Look at that. And these things are awesome. Oh, make your eyes just squint. They're so good tasting. There's a big old seed in them, but the fruit is mm, awesome. I guess I shouldn't talk with my mouth full, huh? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna spit this out. Don't look. <laughs> There's a big old seed in it. And that seed, you don't want to eat that seed. But like I was saying, to the honey house, to finish up, some jobs, in particular the job of beginning to do the rendering of our wax. Now, I'm not going to be doing the rendering of the bees of the cappings uh, today, but I'm going to be doing rendering of all the miscellaneous wax that we are going to get off of these boxes. So let's head inside the honey house right now and <laughs> show you what I've been working on. Everything is right where I left it <laughs> yesterday afternoon when I left. And as you can see, I had uh, the first drum of honey. I had to use the lift and um, finish emptying out the drum. And there's a little bit of honey left in there. So I guess that was the honey that drained down. But regardless, this drum is going to go outside and let the bees finish off all this stuff, clean it up for me. And what I'm doing what I did yesterday was I was filling up the bottle once again. We have been selling the honey, the Abbey honey, like crazy over the last two weeks. Uh, I, I know I've, I've used that whole drum, so it's probably about 45 gallons of honey. Well, not the whole drum because I didn't quite finish filling the bottle up with it yesterday, so I have a little bit left. And so that's really the first job that I got to do, which is finish filling up the bottle because I like to have the bottler all loaded up, ready to go. That way when the gift shop calls saying they need more honey, I just come over here and start bottling up. This is how I pump the honey out of my drums. And as you can tell, I got a spigot at the bottom of the drum right here. And what I do is I, I hook my hose that's attached to the pump, <laughs> which is attached to the outgoing line right here that goes into the bottler. And I simply turn on the valve right here, let the honey charge up the feed line, and then the pump will then just pump it into the drum. I set this up yesterday after emptying out that first drum because I knew I'd, I need to finish filling up that bottle. Let's go ahead and fill up that bottle right now. Everything is in position now, ready to pump the honey from our drum through the pump and into the bottle. And to begin that, first thing I do is open up the gate on the bottom of the drum and here comes our honey coming out of that. The, the, it's just a, a gravity thing that the pressure on the inside of the drum pushes down the honey and that pushes it out of the, of the drum and then once 
our feed line fills up and I keep it charged up uh, all the time because it takes a while to get it charged up. Once it's charged up, the pump will then actually siphon the, pull the honey out from the drum. So it's, it's charged up pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stand over by the, by the bottler and we're going to fill up that bottle. And there you have it. Bottler is now full. I drained the honey in the feed tube into the bottler, draining some of that honey in the hose. And then that way I can just turn the hose upside down, plug it up, and it'll be ready to go for the next filling. Now one thing I do want to make mention of is the temperature that I keep the honey that's in the bottler. I, I like to keep it right around 100 degrees, 95, 100 degrees. Uh, that way it won't crystallize on me and man it just makes the honey be able to flow so easy when filling bottles. So that's right where I, I like to keep it set and it works really really well for me. And now that our bottler is all filled up, ready to go, when the gift shop calls me and asks me, Jeff, we need some more honey over here, we get to move on to the next job of the day. And that is to take the wax that we, have, that we will gather today and then render it down. And where am I gathering this wax from? Well, it's from all the cappings that were in the, um, that had fallen down from the boxes into the bottom of the trays. Uh, any of the burr cappings that we had scraped off, any wax that I've had over the last couple of weeks that I've gotten, and it, I'm going to take all that and render it down. I'm not rendering any of the cappings that I've got in the garbage cans. That'll be another date. Today, I'm simply still trying to clean up what's on this back porch of, of the honey house. And the last time that you saw the back porch of the honey house, it was full of all of our honey supers that when we had pushed them out from the honey house onto the porch after we processed all our honey. When we're processing that honey, we separate out frames that had strictly brood on it from frames that had strictly honey on it. And all those boxes over there, and it's 15, 16, 17 boxes, are boxes that are had or have had fra their frames that had brood in them, in, on the frames. All the other ones, all the other, I don't know, 85 boxes that we had, all were strictly honey. And those, we take those boxes and then we put them over into the peacock pen. In fact, let me, I'll give you a quick picture of what that looks like. This is how I store my honey supers over the summer, over the winter, and into the spring. All these boxes here and half of those over there, all of those are nothing but comb frames that had honey on them. That's all that was on this. So as long as the frame had only honey in it, the wax moth generally won't build in it. It's the brood that attracts them, the brood and the pollen, in the comb that attracts them and because there is none of that in any of on any of these frames the wax moth they don't get into it so I can come springtime these boxes will then be thrown on to, onto the boxes after I make my splits and they'll already have comb in them to to start laying fix it up and draw it out and start laying in so this is how I store all of our boxes with, with drawn comb in it it's really a nice setup in here this used to be an old peacock. They used to have peacocks in here. So it's all caged in. 
So the big varmints, you know, raccoons, possums, they can't get in here. Now rats, roaches, spiders, all that stuff does get in here. But the things that really can cause real damage to our, our wax, they don't get in here. So it stays just like this until I need it. Now hopefully we won't get a hurricane and get all this stuff blown down. All right, now let me get back to what we were talking about. In all of these boxes are frames that had brewed, laid on them, and they were in our honey supers. And as you can tell, <laughs> this one had a lot of brood laid in it. And I can already see some traces of the uh, wax moth, the, the silk from the wax moth in there already. So I've tried several, several different ways of trying to save this cone. Freezing it, putting it in the honey house, all kind of ways. And I, it, I just haven't been able to, to do it so it works. So what I started last year and I'm continuing now is I take all these frames that had some brood on it. This one is, is an excessive amount of brood, but most of them just have little spots on them. But regardless of the, 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 uh, the amount of brood that was laid in it, if brood was laid in it, it will attract the moss and they will destroy the wax. And I want my wax. So what I'm doing is I will then remove the wax from the frames, from the foundations, and then re-wax the foundations come fall, and actually it'll be winter. Um, really, it'll probably be around February when I do that. But I'll remove the wax from the frames, that's what I'm going to be doing today. And then at that point we're going to melt all the wax that I've got. And I'll show you, i got some trays of wax, the cappings, the the on, on capping tank is full of wax. So I'll show you all that stuff, but that's what's going to happen now. I'm going to take all these frames from those 17 boxes and I'm going to start removing the wax. And I, I have a pretty unique way that, that I do that and it really does work very, very well. Before I get started on that, I want you to see that box in the corner. You see that box in the corner? That was a hive that was sitting there and it was getting robbed out and so that was four days ago it was starting to get robbed out and what I did was I closed it up because I didn't understand why it was getting out robbed out because the bees in that hive really strong colony it was from a cutout and they were really strong and now they're getting robbed out so it didn't make sense to me why they were getting robbed out closed them up and then yesterday I went in there and I found out what had happened to the bees in that hive let me show you you can you can see right here we have wax moth uh, silk up in there and right here so we already had the wax moth in there but what had happened was the the hive got slimed out and let me pull out a frame and you can really see it right now and that's what the bees are doing they're just finishing robbing this thing out and as you can tell by the rubber bands here that this was a cutout And what I want to show you is, you know, the damage that these maggots, those beetles, look, look, look at the beetles down here. Look at the larva down here. Look at that. Let's see, I'm going to grab the camera and show you that. So we got everything. We got the wax moth larva, we got the beetle larva, and then we got high beetles themselves. We got the whole shoot match. Anyway, we got uh, got to get rid of these larvae anyway because I don't want all these maggots around here. I should just go over and give them to the chickens and let them have at it. In fact, I might just do that. All right. Who wants some worms? Some nice, juicy maggots. Y'all ready? Come on. Come on, chick chick. Come on, chick chick. We got us a box full of goodies for you girls. Here we go.
while those chickens <laughs> are working on that front side of the frames, I'm going to get over here and start scraping off the wax off of these boxes that had some brood laid in them. And the method I do do that, very simple. So again, the frame with, with the brood on it. And there's a lot of bees still around here because um, um, <laughs> well, I've been feeding the bees for the last couple of days. And then inside of the um, inside of the tank right here, I've got some comb in here that I had in the freezer right here that, that I'm going to go ahead and melt as well. Oh, speaking of the in the freezer, the um, the box that the the uh, bees were robbing out, it, it had two supers on it, and in that top super there were seven frames of honey in there. Let me show you what I did with the, those frames of honey. Here inside the honey house, I had this little deep freeze right here. And what I, I do is I took all those frames of honey, and look at this. There's some beautiful, beautiful frames of honey. But because they had the larva in there, it is more than likely there's all kind of eggs, beetle larva eggs, laid inside of all this wax. I mean, there's seven frames of it. It's beautiful honey. And the bees hadn't started robbing it out yet. So what I do is I just put it in my little freezer for a couple of days, really. And it's actually going to stay in here for a while because what I'm going to do is this honey I'll take out when I catch, do cutouts or catch a swarm, and I'm not going to catch no swarms this late, but when I do cutouts, then I can go ahead and grab this honey in here, thaw it out, and then drop it in, in the hives that uh, I'm, I'm going to be bringing back. So it'll be not go to waste for anything, and it's a perfect use for it, because I don't, I don't need the honey, and the bees will. Now let me show you the easiest way that I have found to clean off these frames that had brood laid on them. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to light my trusty propane lighter. And it's going to light my little torch. Get the torch going. Grab one of these frames out of here. Set it up over the tank. And I'll start heating up the tip of the spatula. And I found this spatula works really good. It's one of those angled spatulas. And it just melts that wax right off of the brain. I mean, it's, you, you couldn't ask for anything simpler and cleaner than that. And that side is done. Flip it over. Heat up my knife a little bit more. There's a wax melt right there. Three strips. And that cone is off of there. Look at that. That frame is ready to be pressure washed and then stored, ready to go for next spring. All right, Whew. that is a ton of frames. What's that? 150, 170 frames that I got to do. So it's going to take me a while to do it. So I'm going to have to get at it. Now the frames with the new wax on them, with just a little bit of pollen or brood laid in them, these things scrape real easy. The ones that had, like those last few that were full of brood, very difficult. But these, they scrape off like a hot knife going through the butter.
not that I need another swarm, but, and I mean in August, come on, we don't want no swarms in August, but got the call, and so let's just go ahead and put these little bees in this nuke box right here. It won't take long. You know, and I can always, I can always use another swarm catch to, to get one up on the rooster. Just kind of want to let them get in there. I don't want to shake them. We got overhead. It's fixing the rain. These bees probably aren't all that calm right now, so I really don't want to shake them. <laughs> I'm telling you. So this is just this is just another side thing that I'm doing uh, as as I'm cleaning up all those those wax frames. And you see, I guess it was a good day to wear my 628 Dirt Rooster shirt, huh? He'll probably claim half of this swarm catch as his own because I was wearing the shirt. They're already starting to go in. I'm going to just go ahead and bounce it a little bit and get them to go in. There you go. Let's put that on there. <laughs> I think that's number 17 for me this year. <laughs> All right, I'm getting back up to the Abbey and go to work, and fix up those frames. All right, that part of the job is done and it took a lot longer than I thought. But I did a few other things uh, that I wasn't planning on and had some things come up unexpectedly like the swarm, I had visitors. So yeah, it, it, it pro it's taken me three days now to get this whole job done. But like I said, I've done more than I really had intended to do when I started out. Initially, I was just going to scrape the wax off and, and, and melt that. But I thought, since I only had 17 boxes to do, I, I may as well just go ahead and scrape the frames off and get the whole frames, um, scrape the foundations off and get the whole frames ready. And so that's what I did. After I scraped the foundations, I took the, the foundations and I removed them from from the frames and then I cleaned all the frames up so 170 frames are now ready to go so what what I'll do is in a couple more weeks I'll pressure wash all of my foundations and get them all ready to go for me to dip them with the wax that I'm melting right now so I this is just going to give me a big start and since I was doing the job to begin with I may as well just do it the whole whole way and, and not come back and get pick it up another time. And I'm telling you, look at this. This is <laughs> this is like a lot of wax in this bag, and it's all that I pulled off of these foundations. That's what this wax is. There's some other cone in there, but for the most part, it came off of the foundations. And I think the kettle is all ready for me to go. I had it started up. Probably about 20 minutes ago, so it ought to be ready. I hear that rain starting to fall right now. And I'm going to go ahead and get over into the next building, drop this, all this wax into it, and start melting it. Down. Oh, yeah, by the looks of it, <laughs> I'd say that kettle is ready to have some wax put in. Let's go ahead and dump that wax. There it is, dumped in there, We're ready to get melted down and cleaned up. Now, while this wax right here is getting melted, I've still got to go and prepare and get ready for the next batch, for the next batch of wax that I need to render. And those are in the trays. So let's go ahead and take care of that while this is melting down. This is the source of where our next batch of wax will be coming. And these trays, all these trays, were sitting on top of our little dollies right there. And all of our bee boxes were sitting on top of the trays. And I would put these two pieces of board in there to keep the boxes above the bottom of the tray. That way, any wax that fell in here it wouldn't grab on the bottom. You can see there's probably about three quarters of an inch, yeah, half an inch, three quarters of an inch of wax in the bottom of these trays. So this is definitely 
worth going after and rendering down. I'm just going to go ahead and empty out these trays into my garbage bag and this will be the next batch that I render down. In 24 minutes and 7 seconds, it ought to really be done. Let's check it out. That steam is hot here. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Got all the cocoons floating on top. I can't get too close or else the lens will steam up, but there you go. Did a really good job melting all of that. I've got my little strainer in the neck of the gate so as to hold back most of that, the cocoons, the, uh, all that stuff. The majority of the nasty stuff to stay behind, but it's going to have to get rendered one more time anyway. Let's go ahead and open up the gate and let this stuff drain. How you like that? I got smart, huh? Put the bag inside of the box and it was the perfect size to put the trays in and it worked real well. And this is what I wound up with all those trays. That's a, that's a nice box. There's a bunch of wax in there. I'll see if now if the other batch is ready to go. Hopefully and it is. And we'll go ahead and get this batch started as well. I did make kind of a mess on this one. Uh, but at least the majority of the trash stayed inside the kettle. And it's definitely going to have to be rendered again because a lot of trash went into it. But it's still going to be way better the next time around than it is this time. So let's clean up this mess and we're going to load up the kettle one more time. The kettle's all cleaned up. At least as much it needs to get to for the next rendering. And we're just going to go ahead and let it heat up and then we get drop that wax in it. And while we're waiting to do all that, that swarm of bees that I caught yesterday, let's go put a couple of frames of honey in there and feed them girls. And now I've got two frames of really nice honeycomb that I had in the freezer. I took it out last night, it's thawed out. So I want to, I've only got three frames in this little nuke, so I've got to get things filled up again before they start building any crazy comb in there. So let's see what they're doing right now. Not good. So far they're just behaving themselves but you can see right in here where they're bridging in here. They'll make funny comb in there. So let's open this frame right here and see maybe our queens on this one. I'm going to just join these three frames together and put the honey frames to the outside of them. I just want to see if I can find our queen real quick. And normally I, I wouldn't even fool with the swarm in August, but I had that honey, got the call, and I just can't help myself. Look, there she is right there. She's a little girl, but there she is right here. Let's see if we can get the camera on her. 
Yeah, I don't think so. Let me see if I can find again. So she's right there. Right there. Alright, let's put them all back together. We know we got a queen in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them we're gonna give them some food. And I'm just gonna push these three frames together. And we're gonna drop in. Look at that. That is one beautiful frame of honey. We'll drop that in there with them. And then we'll drop this frame in there as well. And with all these stores, that ought to hold them. And I can keep an eye on these girls. Pretty easy to see if they're going to need more or if I'll have to feed them. But that's good news. We know we got a queen in there. And now we also know we got lots of stores. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to say, whoo, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's go check up on that wax. Uh, I think it's pretty much, oh yeah, yeah, it's ready. Got some good steam coming out of it. So let's go ahead and grab our wax and we're gonna dump it in there and get this one melted. It's in the kettle now. We close that lid and we're gonna time this thing and see how long it takes to melt it on down. I'll bet you it's not even gonna be 10 minutes. All right, eight minutes and 10 seconds. Let's check and see what it's doing. Yep, <laughs> it's done, not even 10 minutes. Now we turn off this fire and as the last little bit of it is draining out, the bunch is still in there. But look at all the trash that got left behind. I'll just let this stuff finish draining out overnight and cooling down. Should be a pretty good bucket of wax right there. And that's our first bucket right there. But come tomorrow morning, we'll pull these out of the buckets and see what we got. Then <laughs> it's already five o'clock in the evening the next day. And I'm finally getting out here. See our honey, look at this. Look how that wax just drips onto there, hardens up. That's that bucket right there. And that bucket right there. Let's go ahead and dump these out and see what the blocks look like. do it for this video oh my goodness it was a long week today's Saturday already and I mean I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the, the job is over and it really was a job and the back the back porch here at the honey house it's just about all cleared off now I still have to finish the job up by bringing these boxes over into the peacock pen putting the dollies away the trays away and you know, there's still just a few more things, but basically our back porch is cleaned off again. But look at the blocks that, that, that I got off of. This, this block right here, this was from the capping. It has a lot of, you know, wax. Well, I don't think that's a lot of wax from all that cappings that I got. But still weighted. It was three and a half pounds. And so that's not bad. That's not bad. But this beauty right here, a nine pounder. And, ugh. <laughs> Now, but this one, it's got a lot of trash in it. You see all that trash in the bottom? I gotta render all this down again. I didn't do a real go uh, good job when I was doing that, but that is, wow. <laughs> That's a beauty right there, isn't it, folks? She, I mean, golly, it's so good. Thank you, Jesus, for that. 
in spite of the nastiest that it looks, oh, it smells wonderful, wonderful. It smells so good, so good. So that's about it on this one. Now, before I, I, I sign off, I've got, I've got a couple announcements that I, that I want to um, make. The first one is that on September 24th, I'll be going to Canton, Texas, which is a little east of Dallas and a little west of Shreveport. And I'll be, do, I'll be a guest speaker um, for their conference. It's the Northeast, Northeast Texas Bee Association. And in fact, let me, uh, let me show you the, <laughs> what they got going. So look at that. So anybody in that area that would like to come out and meet me, I'll be up there on the 24th of September. Of course, Mona will be there with me. And I'll be speaking to all the people there. And right now, I think there's about 200 people going to show up. And they still have a few more tickets. And boy, the price of the tickets are really reasonable. I think it's $25. Very reasonable. And it's a day-long thing, get your lunch. So I'm, I'm looking, really looking forward to going there and speaking there. Because you, you might not know this, but I, I do like speaking a little bit. <laughs> the second uh, announcement that I want to make is that there's still time to enter into that giveaway contest that I made mention of on my last video. Now, if you didn't know about it, didn't watch the video, didn't know about it, and see what the big giveaway is, and it's a, it's a big prize. Uh, you'll have to, I'll put the link to that video in the description. You'll have to go to the description, find the video link, then go on it and find out what the big surprise gift is and how you can enter into it to win, win that fantastic prize. I mean, there's already people that are just, right now there's probably 40 people that have contacted me about it and it's I, I mean I haven't even looked at the comments uh, yesterday or today so it's a lot there's a lot of interest in it so I think that's enough on this one huh so thanks for watching keep on watching I'll be making more God bless Mr. Ed I'm out of here until the next video This is what I walked upstairs into my office this morning, and this is what I saw on my door. And there is a note attached here. Let's see what this says. Look at that. It's from the Environmental Protection Agency, Washington, D.C., to Mr. Ed regarding hazardous material. After carefully review of your recent YouTube video concerning a filthy, disgusting, totally ugly bee suit that is being offered to the general public, it is important that you preserve the health and welfare of the nation, that you place the enclosed sign on such, immedi on such immediately. Oh, that I place the enclosed sign on such immediately. Additionally, you must notify all persons to stay at least 500 feet away so that they cannot see this repulsive item. Failure to follow these instructions will subject you to excessive fines and or imprisonment. Well, since it's not signed, I ain't worried about it. Let me see what that sign says. <laughs> and this is what I'm supposed to put on the package? I don't think so.